Hi there, I'm Christy. Welcome to my channel. If you're new, I'm so glad to see you. If you are returning, I'm so glad you're back. So today in this video, I am going to be sharing with you some of my pantry challenge recipes. Um, they're not really recipes, it's just kind of what I'm doing. Um, I live off my pantry all year long and if you're new you are or if you're returning you already know this that I do grow the majority of my own food and I preserve it and I try to eat as local as possible um, to feed my family of three but uh, what I will be doing is I'll be sharing with you to inspire so the rules that I'm setting up are not to show and document every single meal that I am you know I'm not gonna log everything we eat because I generally, you know, it's just too many. I don't want to make three meals a day and I don't want to, I don't want this to be a big production. I just want to be able to kind of take you along when I am doing creative projects so that you can become inspired. So, you know, maybe what I am doing will plant a seed for next year for you for some of the canning projects you may want to do or why you want to may put certain foods up on your shelf. Um, if you are interested in some of the things that I'm doing with them. Um, my goal is to inspire. And uh, so I'm just going to share with you what I'm doing. This is my lifestyle. And I do live out of my pantry all season long. The point of it is, is to stay out of the grocery store and whatnot. So my goal is to inspire you with some of the things that I am making and, and using with my home preservation goods. And I hope that it maybe inspires you to try making, you know, maybe you want to grow something or buy something in bulk so that you can make certain pantry items that as staples and how to use them or just different ideas. Um, I hope that this is inspiring for you. I'll stop babbling and we'll actually, we're going to harvest some of this lettuce. Now, before we do that, I'll tell you there's two different types of lettuces and then there's some bok choy that's planted in there. But one of the lettuces like um, that I planted, it the, the first succession, I have two successions of lettuce growing in here. The ones that are on the bottom that are the like the different colored ones, the multicolored ones, those are from a mix called gourmet, super gourmet mix, which I got from West Coast Seeds. I did also get a packet of it this is like an old seed packet. I've had this thing for years. This is one of the original um, packets that come with this kit, this grow tower kit. And the lettuce, it's the same lettuce from West Coast Seed. It's just packaged different. I dislike this lettuce in this tower garden. I'll tell you why and I'll show you why. The lettuce that I, I uh, would recommend if you are growing in a tower garden or you're growing in trays and indoors in indoor light, I recommend this type of lettuce. This lettuce is what I'm finding and I'll, I'll show you the difference, but this lettuce is doing much better. It was started 30 days after this um, gourmet lettuce and look at it. <laughs> it's gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful, this lettuce. And I highly recommend um, for the amount of yield that you get. So this is called Fast and Furious. It is by West Coast Seeds and it is a mix. You have different types of mixes. The ones that are doing the best in here are kind of like a romaine kind of type of lettuce, which is perfect because I like that. I prefer, I prefer that over the um, leaf lettuce usually when I'm doing salads quite frequent and it just, it's, it's doing so much better. I wanted to share that with you because I know many of you are waiting on an update for this and are watching this video with great anticipation to see how this tower is doing. I will be doing some videos on what I'm learning later, um, but today we're just going to focus on some cooking. So let's go get some lettuce in our colander. <laughs>
Okay, while I was rummaging through, I found some stuff that I want to use up. I want to uh, make some space in my in my pantry and I, I rummaged through the freezer. My original plan was to do um, some walleye. So um, I took you with me fishing and we did some filleting of some fish and I did freeze some of that walleye. However, um, cause basically I wanted to use up some of my nectarine salsa that I had also canned in one of my videos. Um, in case one of you guys had made my recipe or followed along with what I did, I wanted to make sure that I included a pantry challenge of how I'm using up this stuff in the winter time um, or like during a challenge. So the nectarine salsa was the inspiration. But while I was rummaging, this bag of uh, shrimp kept falling out and hitting me in the foot. And so I'm like, why would I dig in the freezer looking for the walleye when I can just use up this stinking bag of shrimp that is annoying the crap out of me every time I open the door to my freezer. So we're gonna do shrimp tonight um, in a wrap. So I'm going to make, I'm gonna use the lettuce that we harvested off of the tower garden. Um, and I might make a little slaw to go alongside of it. We'll see. Um, and I'm going to make a pasta salad because I need to have some food for lunches this week. And I thought, well, I have some ingredients here that I'd like to use up that I can include in the pasta salad as well. So uh, I'll sh turn the camera around and I'll show you the ingredients that I'm wanting to challenge myself to use up creatively in this pantry challenge. And uh, maybe it'll inspire you. So I have shrimp I would like to use up and the salsa. I also want to use up some of this hot sauce that I made. It's like a sriracha, so I'm thinking I might make like mix it with some mayonnaise and use it as a like as a topping, um, like a sauce for this with a slaw. Um, and then I have some macaroni. I want to use these quinoa pastas up. Tyson absolutely despises quinoa. And so I need to make some lunches, so I'm going to trick him into eating it. I found some olives that I would like to use up and some ham chunks. This is gonna go in the salad with the olives, um, with the pasta salad, and then this will be dinner. Um, I'll come up with something that. I do have a cabbage. Okay, you guys remember from my garden tours of 2022, the happy cabbage? Well, guess what? We still have happy cabbage and we're gonna use some of it up tonight. Um, I've been using it bit by bit cause it's so big. Um, so I'm gonna cut a piece of it off and we'll use that to make like a slaw or something and found some cheese for the macaroni salad. I'll just start getting to work in. We'll uh, wing it as we go. No recipe, just winging it and being creative. This cabbage is a casero cabbage. I grew this in my greenhouse. If you followed along with some of my garden tours in 2022, this is one of the cabbages that I um, grew in there early, early spring. And so I got the seeds for this cabbage at Vessi's Seeds here in Canada. This is a 70 day cabbage. So it grows very, very well in our climate. Um, I don't often see early varieties of red cabbage. It is also fusarium uh, wilt resistant and it is also has a really good defense against pests. I had no issues at all with any cabbage moths um, or cutworms at all in this variety of cabbage. Actually any of my brassicas, they did really well this year, but especially this particular variety. Out of all of the cabbage varieties that I grew in 2022, this is 100% my favorite. I highly recommend this. The flavor is spot on. And um, even though that this thing has been in my fridge for several months, it's actually been cut for almost just about three months um, in the fridge. And it still has that sweet, crisp flavor. And it's just really delicious. This cabbage, it makes a lot of food. So I just cut one little thick slice off of that big cabbage and look at how much shredded cabbage or 
uh, coleslaw cabbage it gave us, this is going to be plenty for us for the week and for tonight's dinner. So it's a very efficient and great storage life on it. So now we're gonna move on to the next step of making our coleslaw. So we're gonna grate up some of these carrots. These are homegrown carrots that I grew. I don't know the variety of these. They're kind of mixed up. I, I When I harvested, I put all my different carrot varieties in. They are really good. They're storing amazing. And uh, I just wanted to use these ones up because they were the end of the bag in the bottom of the fridge. I have 10, over 10 gallons of carrots to use up, um, like the equivalency of 10 gallons in buckets to use up. So we're going to use a lot of carrots, I think, over the next few months. So for now, we're going to set that to the side and I'm going to start working on prepping things for the other salad, for the pasta salad. So I just um, found some celery. I bought a bunch of celery for our Christmas um in december and because i was hosting or was supposed to be hosting and i bought enough celery to make several veggie trays um but our christmas was canceled and plans changed so i have a ton of celery to still use up and it's been keeping very well in the fridge so i thought i would be a great opportunity to use it while it's still in good condition and uh We'll get that in our pasta salad. Next, we'll cut up some cheese for the pasta salad into little tiny cubes. I buy my cheese in bulk. I buy one case per year of cheese and I freeze it. This was a block of marble cheese that was in the freezer and I had pulled it out. And I usually, we go through one of these blocks every two months, I would say. Um, Tyson really likes cheese and crackers and so does Chaz um, and I just find it's much cheaper for me to buy a case of cheese and freeze it to keep it on hand because you're getting a really great uh, price per ounce and usually I instead of spending hundreds of dollars per year in cheese from the grocery store shelves I'm able to spend $150 on a case that last us will last us a year or more um, so it's a great way for me to save a pile of money because um, cheese in our store for a little tiny block of cheese that is about the equivalency of a one cup is usually around seven to eight dollars. So we'll mix this together and then we're going to add our ham. So I also buy ham in bulk and I watch for sales. So I bought a case of hams that were on sale and hams don't always keep that well in the freezer and sometimes you just want to make something you know you don't need a whole ham um, what I like to do is I like to can it into cubes um, pressure can it in cubes and put it on the pantry shelf for a, a day like this where I can just grab it and throw it in a salad and um, make you know ham and cheese macaroni salad or sometimes we'll take and mash it up and add mayonnaise and whatever other things we want to add to it to make like a deviled ham um, sandwich or throw it as a topping on a pizza. While I was rummaging in the fridge I found this jar of pickles that was sitting there needing to be used up so let's add those into the pasta salad as well. These are home preserved dill pickles that I did up in 2022. I'll be using the pickle juice, so I'm not going to dump that out. I'll be using the pickle juice as the part of the dressing. But for right now, we're gonna switch gears and make the dressing for the other salad for the coleslaw. So this is a jar of apple cider vinegar made from apple scraps. If you recall, I went on a trip to BC to pick up my flower farm bulbs. While I was there, I bought a bunch of apples, and so I made apple scrap vinegar. I also made apple scrap syrup. So I actually had made apple scrap jelly in a video, and one of my batches that I made, it went very syrupy. It didn't really set, I didn't cook it long enough. So I wanted to use that apple scrap syrup as a sweetener alongside of this apple cider vinegar. Um, I made both of those from the same apples, and uh, so I just added it into a little bit into the mayonnaise. I also added some black pepper 
and I also added some salt. I always do this to taste. Um, I never have an exact measure for any of this, these ingredients. I also added some onion, granulated onion um, to here as well to taste. And I think it was probably in total, I think I added about maybe a teaspoon, probably about more like half of a teaspoon of onion. I didn't want a lot of onion flavor in this because it was going to be sitting for several days and I knew it would get too strong. So once I got it all kind of mixed up, I decided to add a little bit of cranberries. Not a lot, just a few pieces, like bits and pieces of cranberry. And then um, I also found some pumpkin seeds in the cupboard that I thought would be a good addition. And I added a little bit of those as well. It was really lacking apple or apple flavor. I like that in coleslaw. So I added more of the apple scrap syrup just to bring more apple flavor into it since I didn't have any fresh apples and a little bit more sweetness just to balance out what I was gonna be serving it with. The salad was very, very good, by the way, very good. I wanted to make a sauce um, and use up some of the stuff I found in the fridge. Like I had some sour cream that needed to be used up in the fridge and I decided to mix that with some of my homemade hot sauce. Um, I made hot sauce out of jalapenos and it kind of has a bit of a sweet sriracha flavor, but I wanted to um, use this as a drizzle for over top of our shrimp tacos and um, you know, as I can use this later in the week for other meals that I'm going to be making. So I added basically three ingredients. I added the hot sauce, sour cream, and a little bit of mayonnaise just to kind of balance it out a bit. I added way more hot sauce. That hot sauce is hot. So I have to, I'm, I don't, I like hot food, but that it's a little bit hot for me and I have to cut it. Otherwise I can't eat it, but this tasted really good. It had a really nice fresh flavor. We're going to move on to making the macaroni salad dressing now. Um, I use a lot of mayonnaise, as you can tell. If you haven't seen my video about using eggs, you should. I'll link it below. But to the mayonnaise, I added some pickle juice from our dill pickles that uh, we cut up for the salad, and i just given this a little bit of a whisk. I'm just keeping it simple. I'm adding black pepper. This is always to taste. Everyone has different preferences. You just have to play around with the ingredients and see what you like. I added some dry mustard to this as well, again, to taste. And um, give that a stir. I added the chopped up ham, cheese, and celery into the dressing and gave that a good stir. Next, we added the rinsed and um, cooled off pasta that we cooked. And um, remember this is quinoa and regular macaroni. It worked really good. I added the olives that I needed to use up that were in the fridge. I prefer not to, but I did anyway. And I added some onion, granulated onion and some dry chives. It needed a bit of onion flavor. Um, and so I just thought that was the best option. And then I just set that to the side and let it marinate. While that was um, in the fridge, I grabbed our shrimp and dried them off. These were thawed and I just wanted to make sure that they, we had a lot of moisture off of them. I threw them in a pan with some hot oil and got them cooking. For the seasoning for these, I kept it simple. I just used up some Cajun seasoning and that's it. I didn't add anything else. I wanted it to have a little bit of spice, but not too much because we have a lot of flavors going on. Um, and I wanted it to have a little bit of heat, but not too much. So that it worked out good. It tasted really good with these flavors. So that's uh, how I did it. And I did cook them with the tails on. I will be giving the tails to my chickens. Um, simply because we cannot get any um, of the oyster shells up here. They're, they're just not available. They haven't been for a long time. So any chance I get to give them any extra calcium, I do. Um, I didn't have any fresh limes, so I just had some lime juice, some bottled stuff, and I drizzled that over top of the shrimp. I washed, when I brought the lettuce up from the lettuce we harvested out of the tower garden, I washed it and I wrapped it in a towel and I put it in the fridge. So I just um, 
this was already pre-washed and I just grabbed it out of the refrigerator in the towel and threw some pieces of that on a flour tortilla. I just wrap the lettuce back up and pop it right back in the fridge just like that. Next, I pulled the tails off of the shrimp and added them to the wrap. Pretty simple. I think next time if I was doing it, I would chop up the shrimp before I cooked it and then it would just make it a little faster. I'd remove the tails and stuff before. Um, but then I added some of the coleslaw and then this is the peach salsa. It's actually nectarine salsa. I made it out of nectarines instead of peaches. I will link that video below as well. Um, and then I just drizzled it over with the hot sauce, that hot sauce um, sauce that we made. There's probably a technical name for it, but I don't know what it is. Just the sauce. <laughs> we'll call it the sauce. So then I just rolled it up and this wasn't like a really thick, super full wrap, but it was, it was good, perfect size for me. Um, I, Tyson likes them a little bit more full, but he just makes himself another one and I don't like them overfilled. So then I just served it with some salads as a side. And um, so there it is, dinner. And then we have several lunches for this week as well. with me during this pantry challenge. I hope that this was inspiring to you in some way. Maybe it triggered some inspiration for you to get creative in your kitchen. So much love to you. Bye for now.